let's go connect the pipes to the riser to finish this entire area. To connect the pipes to the riser, again we would have to uh, make all these connections in the section because of the 45 degree angles which we have. So now I'm going to go in the section, right click and go to view, right here. Now let me expand it as well from below. Alright, we're going to start with one of the pipes. It is best that we start with the one which has the higher elevation, but right now it makes no difference which one we start from, but I'm going to start with the left one. Right click and draw a pipe, and then at a 45 degree we're going to click, then we're going to go further down, click and press escape, and now this elbow I'm going to click on the plus sign to make it a T, then right click on the T and draw pipe, and then draw the pipe upwards. What did the plan tell us? As you can see it said from above to below. So it's coming from the level above and then it goes down to the lower level and gets a junction along the way. Also its size is 150. So by far we've done right by coming from above and going to below. Now for size 150, first I'm going to drag to select these three, the two pipes and the T fitting, and then change their diameter to 150. Also, I'm going to set the detail level on shaded so you can see better. Now this T fitting's uh, straight angle is 150, and then its junction part, which we also call Nafi in Persian, that one's diameter is 100 millimeters. Now look here in the plan, as you can see it goes along the pipe, but its position is a little bit askew in comparison to the drawing in the plan. We're going to check this part in section. I'm going to drag to select these, then use the shortcut BX to open the selection box. Now let's rotate this a little and also expand it from this side as well as this side. So you see here we have a pillar and two beams are connected to this pillar. So now if we want to go exactly according to the plan, this junction would have to go through the beam and then go up but we are not allowed to pierce through or change the positioning of a structural item. So let's view this from the back. As you can see, I've moved this pipe in a way that it would uh, go right beside the beam. You see, it was the same thing in the section as well. We saw this beam here, but then we raised the pipes from right beside it. So even if you are defining what you have in the plan, you have to do the thing that's right. Even previously, we have mentioned that it's important to place your fixtures at the right angles and the right slopes, and then connect them to the other items. Now, let's go back to the section. Now, I'm going to select this T-fitting and then move it up until it's as close as possible to the, to the elbow. Now, we press Escape. So now, we are going to take this pipe, but again, let me remind you that you can't convert your T to a cross. But what you can do is you can put two back-to-back -back T fittings, as in you would put one behind this one, and then connect it to this pipe. Now, if we want to start drawing from here, then it would go through this T fitting and it would all go wrong. You see now, right click and draw pipe. Then at a 45 degree angle or 135 hertz horizontal, we're gonna click. And even though it looks like it's connected, it's not, it's still floating. And that's not what we want, so Control z So we can either decrease the length of this pipe and connect it to this main pipe so that it also maintains the proper angle, or we could start drawing from this point. Pipe Command PI. Now pay attention to the diameter, which is right now at 100, but once I click here, you see it changes to 150. It's like it's inheriting the diameter from the pipe, so we're going to change it back to 100, and then we're going to continue at a 45 degree angle. Also, the slope doesn't matter here because we already are maintaining the proper angle. So click and escape. Now we just got a T. But how can we connect these pipes? Which command can we use? There you go. Trin T R. Click and click. Now escape. Now we can also move this T upwards until it's as close as possible to the other T. So we just put two back-to-back -back fittings and connected both the pipes to this one. Again, you should always remember that in case your both pipes are coming in from opposite directions, they also need to be aligned. 
In case one of them is off course by even one millimeter, the connection would go wrong and you would get one of those reducers. So always double check to see if they're aligned. And also if you ever see that you got an extra fitting, you should know that they're not aligned. Also you need to pay attention to your structural items because a lot of times the riser's position is not proper in a plan. They might just put in a random line just to indicate that this is the riser going up. So you should figure out the proper positioning required for your riser in comparison to the structural items. Now the next thing that I'm going to tell you is that first I'm going to delete this pipe as well as this elbow and then this T I'm going to click on the minus sign to remove it. Now I'm going to select the pipe and go edit type then try to edit the fittings. And do you remember we specified T reducing sanitary for the junction? I also loaded T sanitary so you can see what it is. So T sanitary, OK and OK. So from now on we will be drawing T sanitary junctions. Let's go see what it is. Right click and draw pipe. Then at the 45 degree angle or 135 horizontal we're going to click and press escape. Now look at the difference. This one is T reducing as in the size of its junction could be different from the size of, its, of the straight line. But this one which was the T sanitary for this one the size of all three ends should be the same and even if the junction is supposed to have a different size we will get a transition in between. So this was the difference between T reducing sanitary and T sanitary. We use this T reducing because its material is also available to provide. Now we're going to select this T and then go to the properties window and change it to T reducing sanitary which also makes that transition go away. And now in order to choose to always draw T reducing sanitaries from now on, we're going to select the pipe and go to edit type, then edit fittings, then change the junction to T reducing sanitary. OK and OK. So we have finished modeling the uh, drain system from the area drains to the riser. Now about where this riser goes, like if it's going to go to the lower levels or be connected to the city sewer or a well or a septic tank or a refinery, we're not going to pay attention to that. We're just modeling things in the level. But here it said that it was going to below. If we did have a lower levels plan, we would have checked it out. We could have checked to see where it ends up, which we will be going through that process in our office project. And you will see and understand exactly what I'm talking about when we get there. Now, as a conclusion, I'm going to select another part of this area so we can model that as well. For example, this line right here. Again, I'm going to tell you it makes no difference where you start from, but it is best that you find the farthest area drain uh, from the riser because that farthest drain is determining your elevations. But even if you start from another one, after you're done drawing everything else, you can just create a section and then adjust the elevations. So now we're going to start drawing from here. Therefore, it's best that I create a section so I can find the proper elevation. So section, then click and click. Also, I'm going to minimize the section a little, then right click and go to view. So you can see the beam here. We're going to measure from below that beam down to the FFL which gives us 3570. So we need to give an elevation close to this number for our items. We're going to double check later to make sure it's fine. We were measuring this beam and there's the section. So now I'm going to start drawing at that 3570 elevation. Now the pipe command shortcut PI. Now check the left hand rule. 1 PVC. 2 system type WP. 3 the diameter. 4 middle elevation. And because it's the beginning, we're going to give it the elevation that we got earlier. Now 5 slope, we're drawing from the drain to the riser. We're going farther from the drain, so it's sloped down. Now click, click. Then at a 45 degree angle, we're going to click again. And we're going to ignore this drain along the way. Then go up here and click. 45 degree angle and click again. And then near the riser, click and escape. Now let's go to section and double check the elevation and I'm going to set the detail level on fine and shaded 
and as you can see it turned out to be the proper elevation. But if it were going through the beam or it was too far away, we would have moved the pipe closer. And also at slope down, it's been drawn towards the riser. Now here we have a drain along the way, so the pipe command PI. Now the left hand rule, PVC, WP, and the diameter. Now for the elevation, we're creating a junction from the middle, so we're going to use inherent elevation. And because we are getting close to the drain, we're going to select slope up. Now we're going to click, click, and click again, then press escape. Also, we didn't get any extra fittings. Now we go back up here. Selecting the elbow, we're going to click the plus sign to make it a T, then right click on the T and draw pipe. Now the elevation is coordinated with the T. As for the other items, PVC, WP, and the size is correct. And because we're getting close to the drain, the slope is on up. Now click and click again, then somewhere near the drain click and escape. Let's also place the clean outs. Here we have an elbow, so we're going to click the plus sign to make it a T. And then we're going to click cap open ends. Now you see performance wise, it's not necessary to... Uh, create so much distance between the elbow and the T. It is what it says in the plan, but we're gonna select this T and drag it to the right as much as possible to make it close to the elbow. Now it's too close and it can't go any closer. But in reality and in the building, this distance may be even less. But it's your choice. You can either go exactly according to the plan or you could make them closer. And also we have another clean out right over here. We're going to select the elbow and click on the plus sign to convert it to a T and then put a cap on its end to give it a clean out. Now I want to place the floor drains, but here we see another drawing error. As you can see, it's two floor drains on top of one another. But we're going to guess that maybe one of them was from the architectural plan and the other was from the structural plan. But that doesn't mean that there's actually two drains. Select one of them and place it on top of it. Now we go to the Systems tab and Plumbing Fixture command. And while it's set on Work Plane, then we make sure the placement plane is FFL P05. Now we're going to go here and click. But then we see the axes are not aligned, so Control Z. Now align AL and we're going to select the axis of this pipe and the axis of the drain. Then we have to go to Section, click and click. Now I'm going to minimize the section a little. But you see, because it's on top of the header of this section, I can't really grasp the clips. So I'm going to move this one's header upwards and now minimize this one. Right click and go to view. Now I'm going to expand this a little from below so I can see the next level. Also set the detail level on fine. Now right click and draw pipe. And then at a 45 degree angle, we're going to click and click. But now it's too close to the drain, so select the elbow and move it down as much as possible. But now we're going to zoom in and try to move it again as far as it goes, only as long as the fitting doesn't go through the ceiling because it is best that only the pipe goes through. Now again back to the plan, we're going to go to the next drain, plumbing fixture, and now I'm going to click to place it. Also, I'm going to place the next one and then connect all of them together. Along the axis, we're going to click. But you see it's off course, so AL, now axis of the pipe and axis of the drain. Also over here, axis of the pipe and the drain. Now let's go back to section. I'm going to go take this one and take it and move it up here. Now right click and go to view. Now right click and draw pipe, then at a 45 degree angle click and escape. Also we're going to take this elbow and move it down as much as possible. Again back to the plan and now I guess I'm going to take this section and move it up here. Right click and go to view and also over here right click and draw pipe, then a 45 degree angle and then connect to the drain and press escape. Also move the elbow further down. Now eventually we have to draw the riser size 150 and from above to below. So it's best that we take that previous section and move it up here. Also we're going to flip it 
and place it right here. Now we right click and go to view. Now from here you see this is the beam. The pipe has to go beside it. So right click and draw pipe. Then at a 45 degree angle we're going to click. Then move down here click and escape. Now we're going to click on the elbow and the plus sign to make it a T. Then right click on the T and draw pipe and move it up to here and escape. But the size said it was 150 but we drew with 100. So I'm going to select these three then change the diameter to 150. So now that we have adjusted the size and everything, I can also take this and move it to the left and get it closer to the beam. Right here, now let's go check in the plan. Then we see that what we've drawn is a little bit not coordinated with the plan, which is fine. Now we're going to keep the mouse on this line, then press the tab key once, twice, then three times and click. Now let's go to the selection box or shortcut BX. Now check out this line in 3D. The floor drains are up there and each of their pipes are going from below the ceiling and also go beside the beams until they get to the riser. Also over on this side in this corner the riser is going down. So you can decide to place and connect every single one of the drains here in the plan just as a practice. Each of them has its own unique points. And you can draw all of them and practice so much until you completely learn how to do it. You would memorize things like the slopes, the connections, the system type, and making sure the sizes are proper. So wherever you are drawing anything, make sure to pay attention to the golden left hand rule and determine your elevations in comparison to the structural items. Now as the last pipe we draw here in the parking space, we're going to go to this part for which we drew all these mini ducts. Now we want to draw the drain system of this part so that later on we will be able to use this example for interruptions. As in we would check that uh, these pipes which we are drawing would not be interrupting the other drawn ducts. So now let's create a section and in my opinion the farthest drain to the riser is this one. So we need the elevation of this area. So I'll create a section here, click and click. Also, I'm going to minimize it a bit. Right click and go to view. Now I'm going to use the line dimension, then measure from below the beam to the FFL, which gives us 359. Now we go back to the plan and start drawing with that same elevation we got, which was 359. Now what was the pipe command shortcut? PI. And now the left hand rule. 1 PVC. 2 WP. 3 size 100. For elevation, which we said was going to be 359, and we're getting farther from the drain and going to the riser. So getting farther from the drain means negative slope, slope down. Now click and click, then at a 45 degree angle, click again. Then I'm going to move down to over here and click, click, and somewhere around the riser, click again and press escape. Now let's close these extra sections, then go into our last one and set detail level on fine and shade it. And we see that the elevation turned out to be proper, so we're going to keep it. Now here in the plan, I'm going to draw this junction. So the pipe command PI, double check PVC WP size, then for the elevation because it's in the middle of the pipe, inherit elevation. And because we're getting close to the drain, we're going to select slope up. Now click and click. Then click and press escape. Also, we didn't get an extra fitting. Now let's move down here. We select the elbow. I'm going to click the plus sign to convert it to a T. Then right click on it and draw pipe. Then check again PVC WP diameter. The elevation is inherited. And slope is up because we're getting close to the drain. Now we're going to go a little ahead and click. And then at a 45 degree, click again. Then I'm going to move down here and click. 45 degree angle, click. Then somewhere near the drain, click again and press escape. Now right here, click the plus sign of the elbow to make it a T. Then select the T and for its clean out, you put a cap open ends. What about this part? Again, select the elbow and click on the plus sign to convert it to a T. Then select the T and cap open ends. Also, over on this side up here, 
We have the same thing. Select the elbow and click on the plus sign. Then select the T and click on cap open ends. Now let's go place the drains. We go to the systems tab, then plumbing fixture. We're going to be placing the floor drain on a work plane on level 5. Now I'm going to go here and click. You see the drain is not aligned with the pipe, so I'm going to keep it in mind. And then another junction over here, so we're going to click again. And the same thing for the last one. We're going to put it here and click. Now escape and align all of them AL. Now click on the axis of the pipe and axis of the drain. Let's go up here again. Axis of the pipe and the drains. And the last one, axis of the pipe and axis of the drain and escape. Now let's put a section here. Click and click. I'm going to minimize the section a bit. Right click and go to view. Now let's set the detail level on fine and for a better view also shaded. Now we're going to go on this pipe, right click and draw pipe and then at a 45 degree angle but this is now too close to the drain so we're not getting an elbow. But it's alright, you can just select this elbow and move it to the left. Now we created the distance. Now select this pipe, then drag it until it's aligned with the axis of the drain, right click and draw pipe and then connect it to here and press escape. We also have enough space to lower this elbow. Now let's go back to the plan and we're going to be moving this section. We're going to take it and put it over here. Now let's go back to the section. Then right here, right click and draw pipe. Now at a 45 degree angle, click and click and press escape. Also let's lower the elbow. Now again, we're going to go back to the plan and then move the section, put it right here. Now we're going to go to section. Now I'm going to click on the pipe, then right click and draw pipe. And then at a 45 degree angle, click and click again and press escape. Also, we will lower the elbow. So now we have also connected the pipes to the drains. And as for the riser, I'm going to take this section and move it up here, then flip it to see it from upside down, then right click and go to view. Let's expand the section from below, and then go over here, right click and draw a pipe, and then at a 45 degree angle, click, then we're going to drag it down, click and escape, and now we're going to select the elbow. We're going to click on the plus sign to convert it to a T, then right click on the T and draw pipe, then we drag it upwards, click and escape. Now I'm going to hold the control key, then select the pipe and the T and this pipe. Now I'm going to change their diameter to 150. Now we can take this pipe and use the arrow keys from the keyboard to move it to the right as much as possible until it's close to the beam. Now let's go check that in the plan and we see it's at the proper position. Also, it's not necessarily completely coordinated with the plan. So now, we have drawn this entire drain system so that later on we can compare them to the already drawn ducts and make sure that they're not interrupting one another. But always keep this in mind that practice makes perfect and you can only get better by practicing more and more. I've also given you a plan full of drains which you can practice with. Sometimes I like to assimilate working with Revit with driving. When you start to drive, first of all, you have to get your driver's license. And then when you're first driving, you're always too attentive on how and when to step on the clutch pedal or the brakes or how to change gears. You're always checking the mirrors and going at a certain speed. And then when you gradually get used to the cars around you and the streets, then you increase your speed. Then you realize you're changing gears without thinking. You can easily go reverse. And overall, you continue practicing to drive until you dare to weave through traffic. Same thing here. You have to practice drawing drain pipes as much as possible. In fact, the drain systems are the turning point of MEP in Revit. That's because the pipes have slopes to them and because we have 45 degree angle connections. So you should practice and pay attention when you draw. So keep all these points in mind and you will be able to draw perfectly. <laughs>